All right, clean the, that switch there. And it appears to me like, let's first remove this shroud. the shroud. And I think removing these two boards. I want to remove this one first to see how much play I have. Because I think if I just remove these two screws here, I should hopefully can kind of flip that back and then get to those lamps without going through the front and removing the the dial um, faceplate or I guess the dial tuning dial tuning dial I think that's the route to take. Man, those are in there kind of tight. All right. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Well, kind of, sort of. Sorry, my head's in the way. I'm trying to figure out. How to get these boards out of the way. There's another little clip here holding the wires for these boards, but you've got connections on top and bottom. So hopefully you can see the the lamps down there. All right? Lamps are sitting down in here. So I can zoom in and show you that. Again, I bumped my camera mount, so see the lamps down in there. I mean I, I think I can replace them from here. Alright, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna um now I actually have, and someone pointed this out in an earlier video, and this is the problem, I, I have it and then I don't have it. A little fuse puller, and I can never seem to find it. So I don't know where it went. But it always sat up here and I don't see it. So I'll go with what I normally use, which is a dowel, and just pop these up. A dowel and... Sometimes a pair of needle nose pliers. Those aren't too bad. Well, it's going to be pretty boring watching me do each one of these individually, so let's go super fast here. So I opted for warm white, even though people love cool blue. And um, I've worked on a couple of these 
six thousands. Um, but I've never really done like a dive into them to like replace lamps and stuff, at least that I remember. Um, I would love to work on a nine thousand. Um, I know that I, in my mind, I would think, you know, I think it'd be cool to have one, but I just. The amount of receivers that I've that I've kept <laughs> that I thought were cool to work on, I mean, what happens is I turn around and I've got a buttload of receivers and I have too many. So then I get rid of them and I find that I don't really miss them. I like the idea of having, you know, a variety of electronic, um, but it can get overwhelming. Like. Too many turntables, too many, too many of everything. Just too much of it. Too much of everything. All right, so let's see if I can flip this up and uh, let's give it some power. I'm gonna zoom out. Plug this in. Not very bright, huh? I mean, it's brighter than it was, but that's with the LEDs. That's... But actually, you know, that's actually not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not over, it's like not over powering, which, well, let me turn that down. Um, and you know what? The FM light is illuminated. It's just really dim. I'm going to have to check out... I wonder what's going on with these lamps. Just curious as to what... Like, what's going to that. Get the stereo. So their stereo's on, and it's these two yellow ones. Yeah, that's only that's only a volt. That's nothing. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be more than a volt. Those are definitely lighting up. I'm gonna grab a, it's probably, a, I would assume, that is eight volts, could be six. I just wanna grab one of these and just see what's going on with that, so. So what I'm looking for is I'm just looking to see how brightly this is going to shine when I hit both of these, the two yellow. Yeah, that won't even light up. And that's an LED. Or is that incandescent? Oh no, this is incandescent. Huh. Interesting. Oh, that's weird. When I did this, the stereo light is really bright. So, and there's a resistor going across here. So I'm thinking that resistor, there's an issue with this resistor. So. Let me see if I can get you in here and show it to you. So there's a resistor right here. And when I put one end of the um, of this little lamp here and here, um, the lights got bright. So I'm thinking that resistor is probably out of spec. So... Pull that out 
And I have to pull down the service manual and see what's supposed to be going on with that. But I'm thinking, got a flaky resistor. This old solder can be very, very uh, temperamental at times. I may just cut this one out. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, I'm going to back up. And I'm going to cut this resistor out and measure it. I'll have to pull down the service manual and see what it's supposed to be. Um, then we'll go from there. All right, so I poked around on this for a while. My PC in the garage. It's no longer, the Wi-Fi card is no longer working. I have Linux out here, I, the Wi-Fi adapter's working. Just not on this Ubuntu machine, so I gotta figure that out. So I went inside and I was like, hey, this is so weird. Like, I looked at everything, I changed that resistor. The resistor was a little bit out of spec, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Why are the lamps so dim? So, what I normally do is I'll go out to Audio Karma, like, who has who else has had this problem? You know, and I just I did a search on the on the engine or on the on the site, um, and uh, somebody had a similar issue, and they they kind of did the same thing I did, and uh, somebody said, well, does this have a, vo a line voltage selector in the back? So maybe this was brought back from overseas, and the line voltage selector had not been set to 117 or 120, whatever it is. If you look at the voltage selector, it is indeed set to 200 and 40, 240 volts. So, what I'm going to do, I've got a couple of minutes here, and I've got to go and start my day. I'm going to change the line voltage selector to 100. So, what I'm doing off camera here, let me See if I can move this into the frame, is I've removed the fuse, and I'll likely have to change the fuse. I'll need to look at what this says. But usually this just pulls off, right? So this pulls out like that, and then you align it to 120 volts. And I need a three amp fuse, and right now I have a, right now I have a three amp fuse. So, pop this new one in there. And I didn't even think to look at this. Um, my Sansui 9090 was, uh, had a similar issue. Got it from the Goodwill for less than 10 bucks. And got it home because it would not turn on. And it was set to 240 in the back and there were some uh, resistors that had burned up as a result. And, I don't know, 30 minutes and a couple of bucks later, I had a working Sansui 9090. So let's power this on and see what's going on with the lamps. And beautiful. So let me, let me show you the lamps. And this is with my, my bench light on. FM's lit, stereo's lit, and all the other lamps were working, so. Interesting. Had, didn't even didn't even consider looking at that voltage selector switch. Again, in the past when I've encountered that on a turntable or something like that, it'll run slow. Um, I've had uh, gosh, there was another receiver. I don't remember if I did a video on it, but um, I think it didn't turn on. It wouldn't even power on. So that's that's interesting. So um, yeah, and this I, I need to remove this shroud and really clean that switch there. Plus I need to flush everything else with deoxit, but or with fader lube F5. So I'm going to let this sit this today and then this afternoon I'll come back hit everything else or hit everything once again. Um, I'll need to check see if there are alignment procedures on this. I don't I don't know if there are. I don't know if it's going to be something I'll include in the video, but I'll check the manual see what I may have to do there. But um, it's working. Lamps are working. Uh, I may let it run for a couple hours just to make sure, but um, if this is the only segment you see on this, then uh, this was uh, non-eventful after this point. So, uh, as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you either in part two of this series on the SX6000, or if everything is good, I'll see you in the next video.